It seems a long time ago since a crew of six, three Russians, two Europeans and one Chinese, walked away from the flashlights of a hectic press conference into their isolation modules and began a virtual mission towards the Red Planet. It was the 3rd of June, 2010. Now, almost 520 days afterwards, these six pioneers are about to end their internment and take the first breath of fresh air in one and a half years. Diego Urbina, one of the two European crew members, has dreamed of that moment innumerable times. So first thing that I will do when uh, we open the models will be uh, hugging my family and spending time with them. Then I will call my friends, asking them what has been going on since I left. One of the main objectives of this simulated mission to Mars was to see how six ordinary people with very different personalities and cultural backgrounds would deal with each other during such a long period of confinement. So one of our worries was actually that this group would grow bored with their company, so, so that there would be more friction uh, and conflicts than we actually saw. What we saw in the end was that the, two, the, the team was, was acting as a support structure, lifting people that were down for the moment. Together through good and bad, that's been the spirit on board of Mars 500. Moments of monotony, followed by moments of great excitement, such as February 2011, when they docked with the Mars lander. When we opened the Mars lander, it was filled with um, a lot of items, food, um, clothes, and um, well, hardware, a lot of different things. And so it was like, like Christmas. Once at Mars, three crew members, amongst them Diego, walked on the surface and collected samples as real Marsonauts will one day do. Apart from mission highlights, their daily routine has been similar to a real space mission. Scientific experiments, physical exercise, spaceship maintenance, even keeping the house tidy. Any spare time was used to read, play music together, prepare for festivities such as Christmas and Halloween, write letters home, or communicate with the outside world, albeit with a delay of up to 20 minutes each way. We had received uh, a lot of emails and a lot of uh, Twitter messages that improved uh, our spirits and made us a little bit more happy, and that is what makes you allow, allows you to go on through the more difficult times. There were times of great stress, very dark. such as when they had to cope and with a power outage uh, for more than 24 hours. Today we're out of lights. The challenge looked so real that it took ground control almost two weeks to convince them that it had only been a simulation, but they'd mastered it perfectly. But the biggest challenges of future exploration flights are not necessarily the technological, but the social ones. How well can humans stand long-term isolation? This is the most important question Mars 500 has been dealing with. With the experiment about to end, participants and scientists seem to agree on the answer. Yes, man is able, physiologically and psychologically, uh, to endure the confinement of a mission to Mars. So, let's go there. What really has been proven is that you can take a small group of people, put them in a confined space for a very, very long time, and they will come out being not only alive, but very functional um, from, a man, from a psychological point of view and also fit from, from the physiology point of view. And the moment of truth is not far. On the 4th of November, the hatch of the isolation module will finally open. After one more month in Moscow for medical checks and debriefings, the six Mars 500 crew members will go back to their lives on Earth knowing that they have written an important page in the history of space exploration.